What is it about a labyrinth? I've heard about it. Walking meditations can be quite powerful, but I haven't experienced it. So I'm curious, what's the method or the magic behind a labyrinth that you wouldn't just have by going on a nature walk? Wonderful question. It is a magic portal that I think are very, very uh, many times overlooked because they're all around the world and they usually are in churches or hospitals or schools. And what the magic is, now I've never been formally trained to walk a labyrinth because for some reason I've, I've just never wanted to know that. I, I wanted to make it my own. What I experienced was just in walking these paths, the way that they're situated, it's not a maze, so it doesn't confuse the, the person walking it. It's one way in and one way out. There's, you can't get lost, and it really is a metaphor to the path of walking to the center of you and your truth and what is true for you and what your purpose is. To me, what happened was it was like an energetic shift because of the way the paths traverse. I felt an immediate peace, an immediate calm, an immediate clarity. And I didn't know why. And that was 15 years ago. Now I have a whole method around that. And that's what, you know, I'm, I'm authoring a whole book around the whole method. And it was just based upon walking to the center of that labyrinth and back out taught me everything. Some people climb mountains and learn lessons. Some people swim oceans. I walked the labyrinth and found everything that has brought me bliss and joy. And I want this for everybody. That's awesome. Could you elaborate a bit on the method? Sure. So there's seven circuits or seven paths. The eight I refer to, it's, it's the actual center. When you finally get to the center, the method is really something that I came upon that was helpful in my journey. What prevents us from getting to the center of ourselves or what prevents us from getting to the truth of ourselves, there are a lot of obstacles that we put in the way. So they can be anything from physical or health of our body. They could be environmental. Maybe it's the person we're living with or the junk in our pantry. Mental, emotional, you know, what is one's mindset? There are things that get in our way, obstacles, lies that we tell ourselves, self-sabotaging, you know, it's, it's endless. Trauma, unhealed trauma, poor health. And so I went on this journey of cleaning and clearing all of this out of my life because I knew to get to the center, I had to be like the lightness of being. I had to like discard everything that felt heavy, everything that felt hard, and not only heal myself, but just let go of the things that felt so hard and, and just so heavy. So this is my method of cleaning and clearing and getting to that center so that you are so light that you're just this oneness. You're just one with everything. And there's there's seven paths. There's really eight. And so there's there's more to it. But that's really the beginning of how to get to that center is this creating brevity and lightness, which is also one of the things I learned right away to create this lightness was surrender. I heard that probably the second time I ever walked the labyrinth, surrender. I got to the center and I heard very clearly, surrender like a duck. And I was like, what does that mean? Well, yeah, a duck has its feathers and it just was like an image that came to me. And I just kept getting messages over and over and over again. And they all guided me to the truth. And it's just a truly magical, magical portal. When you're talking about how you have this method of cleaning and clearing, it reminded me of Marie Kondo and her book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. It's such a simple premise that she puts out, that it's, but it's so profound. And it's just, does this spark joy? If it doesn't spark joy, why is it in your home? <laughs> like, give it up. Send it on its way. That's something that really stuck with me. If you had to encapsulate in a phrase or a short sentence is about, what would it be? It's about deep listening for inner truth. So deep listening for inner truth. How does someone who has that monkey mind chatter going on all day long, their mind is so busy that they can't even fall asleep. I used to be there. How do they get to that place of listening to the voice inside, that still small voice mentioned in the Bible? That's you're listening to God 
and you think it might be your 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 own inner voice, but it's not. It's you. Um, it's it's your higher self and God, kind of co mingling, answering you, and guiding your everyday life and decisions, big and small. And we think we might be talking to ourselves or going crazy, but it's not. It's the way we're designed uh, to be connected to God by going within. So. How do they get from that place of, I can't even imagine this concept of hearing God or my guidance from above just by getting quiet? From the students that have gone through my program that I take to the labyrinth, they can have the the craziest monkey mind ever. But it's sort of shocking how we can so instantaneously go from monkey mind to getting them in this portal of a labyrinth. That's how magical it is. Everything literally falls away in terms of the beliefs you have, the worries you have. Things just gradually fall away. There are these aha moments that happen almost instantaneously. I've seen people walk the first path and have aha moments. Certainly by the last path, most of the time they're in tears. Why? because they finally have been able to feel themselves for the first time because it's so quiet, it's so powerful, and they've just created that space. And a lot of times we don't create that space, but we complain that we have this monkey mind. It takes conscious effort to create that space, to facilitate that experience. But we still want to go on social. We still want to watch the news. We still want to get into that gossipy conversation Look, those are choices that are fine, but don't complain about (laughs) your monkey mind then. And so that's really what happens. A lot of people are, say they're missing something in life. What are we missing? I found out what we're missing. We're missing ourselves. And when we get into that labyrinth, we go, oh, there I am. I can feel myself. I can hear myself. I can hear the birds chirping for the first time. I can hear the crunch of my feet on the ground. It's that noticeable. 